Now, um, I don't know if it's in here. Foreign, did I, did I put foreign languages in here? Um, something that's, that's handy to do with foreign languages is I actually make a double picture. And what I do is I make a picture of the way the word sounds. So, like for, um, let's say in Spanish, let's say I wanted to memorize uh, the word for table, uh, mesa. So what I might picture is a messy table or like a mesa, like a plateau, you know, in the desert, high desert, a, a, a table on sitting in the mesa. Um, and that's going to trigger the sound, the pronunciation of the word. So I don't say the Jersey Spanish is probably easier in the sense that it's spelled the way it sounds. It's a little Spanish, yeah, Spanish is a cakewalk compared to English. English. Um, and you know, with a, with a language like I'm, I'm working with one kid on his uh, Japanese. Oh, okay. that's gonna be challenging. So, again, you look at the symbols and you make. Okay, so do you know Japanese, or are you just going with whatever word looking? No, I don't know. I don't know Japanese. Okay, I didn't think you did. Okay, I didn't see. Me. I don't know Spanish. You know, the only Spanish I know is is you know dos cervezas por favor and don't esta baño. Yeah. You know, give me two beers and where's the bathroom? That's it. That's all I know. But see, that's that's another example of is apparent. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to know. What you need to know is, is the technique, because the technique is not content dependent. That's what breaks us away from all that years and hours and hours of endless tutoring. Okay, we're not going to teach them the information. We're going to teach them how to learn. That's the huge monumental difference. So yeah, I can I can teach any, I can teach them Japanese. I, I I've worked with guys on law school. I haven't taught anybody medical school yet, but I've I've worked with a guy on how to pass his law exam. I never seen I never seen the law exam before the the bar. I've never seen it before, and I, and I said okay, show me what the questions look like. What are you struggling with? So he showed me the questions, and I said oh okay. Now now, what's the answer? And I watched his process. Okay? So in one section, they have these um, weird like puzzles. Okay? It's like 25 points. And they give you these clues, and you have to deduct, use deductive and inductive reasoning to, to solve the problem. Well, most people, this is like torture for them. To him, he was he get 24 out of 25 on the sample tests. It's like, wow, that's pretty impressive. Okay, but when it came time to read a passage and answer the questions, he's like he's like down to fifty percent. So there, he was I mean he was shooting for like what a one six he was he was wanting to be in the top ten percent to to so that right. he, it opened up these possibilities for law school, um, but and he wasn't getting it. So why? Well, he was using the same strategy, the puzzle solving strategy, that was awesome. Totally appropriate for solving these puzzle questions, but he was trying to use the same process to solve the read it and answer the question part, the, the comprehension uh, uh, part of it. And it wasn't working for him. So so all I did was say, well, that's that I, I recognized that that was an inappropriate strategy for the for the type of information. And I said, let's do this, let's read it. Um, as you read it, pull out the keywords. Look at the key. Look for the keywords, and um, make a picture of it. We actually got some subtleties because because some of the questions were kind of or the reading material was kind of interesting. They would present you with facts, and then halfway through the article, they or the the passage, they would say, well, what they that they found out that these facts were false, and now there were other facts. So, so you're supposed to forget all those that you just tried to remember. Yeah, but you can't do that. So what you do is you change your picture. So what he would do is, if if the information was less important, he would push it away. This is the code we came up with. He would push it away and make it gray. So it, if it was off to the left in his picture, it was not important. If it was circled with a red line across it, it was false. See that? So So that was the trick for in this case for this individual on how to remember the information but remember that it was false. Right. Does that make sense? Is it? Yeah. Okay. I see how that would be tricky for him, you know, trying to study for that and you're just 
just trying so hard to remember everything, and then you get in there, and then yeah, you know. Um, so again, whether it's Japanese or Russian, it doesn't matter, uh, as long as you have a strategy that works. So you you take the the word, and you you have the meaning of the word, and in this case, the sound of the word, or the way the word looks. You know, like, you know, like this, you know, there's some weird symbol for lion or something or mountain, you know, whatever it is. And, um, you know, mountain with three legs. So I would put something like that in my picture along with the meaning of the word. Boom. It's done. It's done. Yeah. So you, you can, I mean, you can learn Japanese in like no time. Okay. How'd that work for you guys? Good? Get the idea? So, are you supposed to put the word... There is no supposed to. <laughs> okay. All right. Nip that um, one in the bud right now. All right. Now. Okay. Wrong <laughs> um, Like, make a picture of the word underneath the visual picture, or you intertwine the, the letters in your picture, or whatever way you do it? Yes. Whatever way you do it? Yes. Personally... I prefer to put the picture uh, above the word. It's just the way I like it. Mm -hmm. I've worked with kids that do both. Some of them like to put the word into the picture. Some like the word above the picture. Some like the word below the picture. And that's kind of the reason I like that, is, and I usually start there because that's the way we read. See, we see the word down here, and where our picture's up here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the picture's always above the word. The movie, my movie, my reading movie, my listening movie happens above the word that I'm looking at on the page. Just you know, a person. Like every time I think of a letter, the the letter or the three letters take up the full screen in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's, never it's hard picture. to shrink them down. To, uh, yeah. All right, yeah. try this. Yeah. Watch this. Try this. This is good. This is good. Good question. So now we're getting into what we call submodalities. So the modalities, and and there's. Uh, there's a number of good books. Here's here's an older one, Teaching Through Modality Strengths by uh, Swasi. What is it? Uh, Barbie and Swasing. Very good. It, it really talks, speaks to the differences between multimodal teaching, which is what the model we use today. It's a shotgun approach, right? You you load your shotgun with some visual, with some some auditory and some kinesthetic, and and then you just. <laughs> You just fire away. Well, I, I was mixing, mixing uh, metaphors because I said shotgun, but then I used a, <laughs> a, a, a AK-47. So whatever. You just you load it with all different bullets or whatever, and you just spray them out into the classroom and hope something sticks. Um, so those are those are your modalities. Your your visual is a modality. Auditory is a modality. Kinesthetic is a modality. Some modalities, so so close your eyes, close your eyes, make a picture of the three letters or whatever it is, and now take that picture and move it further away, push it away from you to make it smaller, and see if that makes it easier to see or harder to see. You can move it up to the left, you can move it up to the right, you can move it back down to center. You can um, give it some sparkle, make that make the picture moving a little bit. Sometimes I do that for kids. You know, make it sparkly, make the letters sparkly. That does help. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah, that uh, helps. Good, good. So controlling where the picture is in space and is it moving or still? I mean, the list the list goes on and on. Um, your pictures can be either framed or they can be panoramic. They can go all the way around. They can be life size. They can be smaller. Um, they can be in color and black or black and white. Generally, we want to work with color. Um, and is that good? You can open your eyes now. No, I was. Yeah, it does help if I stretch out my picture, and then it does help if I picture it like glittery. If I can shrink it down. Cool. Instead of just the red, like how I saw it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I had to do? Because I yeah. was having that same cool. problem. It was just letters. You know, I couldn't get the picture and the letters at first. So I was kind of imagining, like when you're on the computer and you have a box with a word and you want to shrink it, how you just drag the corner and you I just... 
that's kind of what I did. I just did the shrink it down. It just Very <laughs> good, yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the computer way too much. <laughs> she minimized that one. <laughs> yeah, it's just... <laughs> Um, on vocabulary memorization, um, ideally, we're not going to throw more than five to seven words at most kids in one night. Um, below high school level, maybe at eight, seventh and eighth grade, maybe ten in, in a night. I, I, I would hesitate to go beyond that. High school kids, maybe 10 or 12. Um, at one time, if you're going to do more than 10 words, I would break it up into two sittings and make sure you get some, some review in there so they, they separate those. Um, and there's my little Mesa example. Um, memorizing abstract information. This is where you need to get a little creative. You, you Don't be so literal. Don't actually be so literal with your pictures. Um, and, and, and this can be, this can take some work with the child to get them. They're not used to having fun learning. Right. Okay? Learning is, is torture. It's horrible. It's this, it's this sentence that, that, you know, I have to endure until I get rid of my parents and, and all these, these, <laughs> these, nasty adults and I can do whatever I want in life okay so they're not used to having fun right I mean what do you, fun what do you mean making silly pictures so so you're gonna have to probably reinforce this and work with them for a while before they get the idea that oh I can sit in class and make funny pictures out of what the teacher says and actually have fun learning I can I can use cartoons I can imagine Spongebob Climbing Mount Everest, and, and he goes up to 24,000 some odd feet, whatever it is, you know. Um, or, you know, the tectonic plates, large dinner plates moving around the surface of the earth, right? Crashing into each other and going over and under and stuff like that. Um, names. Um, there's actually a number of systems out there for converting names into pictures um, that probably most kids aren't going to take the time to learn. But if you do work with an adult who's in sales or something where you really want to be remembering, connecting with, be able to meet someone and know their name, then you might want to start working on that list. You know, you know, Mary is you picture married. Um, so uh, just have swans a pre-made list be that swans. you make pop in your head when you meet the, and you connect the Yeah, it's like a, a it's like a ready-made list, okay. you know. Yeah, there is a, a website. Um, I think it's Personal Freedom of Development, and they specialize in helping you remember names. And they've got symbols made for all the names you can think of. And if there's not one on the list, then you can create it and add it to the website. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, uh, I, and you can probably. With you know, in a couple of afternoons, memorize a lot of the common names: Harry, here, Harry, Harry, um, Jim, Gymnasium. Uh, you know, it's just you know, John, Toilet. <laughs> um, you don't say that out loud, right? <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't say that out loud. Um, there's also I'm probably not going to go into the into the. Um, the, uh, let's see, I don't think I'm going to go into the math, uh, memorizing numbers, but there's a system that's out there if you or someone becomes interested in it. Uh, let me give it to everybody. I'm going to give it to you, not, but not spend a lot of time on it. It's a, it's a number code where you actually learn to convert numbers into letters or actually more precisely the sounds and from the sounds once you get to memorize this little code you can take any number and turn it into a picture so just like you would remember pictures for your uh, for your uh, um, for your vocabulary you you could make a picture 
um, that might say, imagine a, uh, a turtle. Okay, so you make a picture of a turtle, and the turtle is sitting on a bench, and the bench is on the head of a llama, and the llama is driving this live pickup truck, live pickup, right? So you got turtle bench, llama live pickup. And if you were to write that down, turtle and bench. Llama live pickup. Okay? So how how long would it take to memorize that? Right? I mean everybody close your eyes. Just picture turtle on a bench on a llama live pickup. Very quickly. Very quickly. You could you could see that, tie it all together in a little picture. Well, here's what you just memorized. One er is four. P nine, Ch five, three, five, nine, seven, nine. So you just memorized in like 30 seconds, if you knew the code, you just memorized the first 14 digits of pi. So if you needed to remember years, dates, the distance to the moon, whatever it is in a number, you can convert it, phone numbers, you convert it to a picture, you know, if you imagined, this is an easy one, but if you imagine Columbus tripping, tripping off his boat, right? He's tripping off his boat, T-R-P-N, tripping, one, four, nine, two. Of course, we all know that Columbus landed in 1492, so that's an easy one. Or you can use it as a peg system. So let's say you, you connected the, the numbers with, with certain words. So like one was tie. Two is knee. Three is home. Um, four is or. Five is eel. Um, notice there's some letters and vowels don't mean anything. So t, t, i, t is one, n is two, m is three, r, or is four, and, and l is five. So let's say I memorize a picture of um, someone dressed in a general's outfit who's washing a tie, a tie, one tie. He's washing a tie that weighs a ton. Washing a tie that weighs a ton. Washington. Washington. So who's the first president of the United States? Washington. Um, knee. A knee. So I get my, I'm, I'm in the president mode. I think of a knee and I get a picture of this John, a toilet John, with Adams. Adams being flushed down the toilet or the John. John Adams. Who's the second president? John Adams. Um, third president, home, home. So I imagine a home, and the home is being eaten by a giraffe and his son. Giraffe and his son. Giraffe and son. Jefferson. 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 Third president, Thomas <laughs> Jefferson. You got to get creative. You got to get outside the box. But that's where our guys live anyway. So once they get in the habit of this, it starts to become a, a natural. Um, or, so I imagine um, these big iron chains that are fighting mad with the sun. Chains that are mad at the sun. James Madison. And I'm beating them down with an oar. I'm beating them back with an oar, right? The oar is beating these chains that are mad at the sun. James Madison. Um, eel. So I picture this big swirly eel, and out of its mouth is coming this, like a bush, like a rose bush, but instead of flowers, it has money. Okay? So it's, it's a money rose. Money rose. So the fifth president is? 
James Monroe. Monroe, yes. So, this is for advanced. Does this work? I mean, I find this really overwhelming where you're going with this, and it'd be so much easier just to memorize the presidents than to go this route it, for it, me. It depends. So. It depends who you are. Um, if you need to remember lots and lots of complex information, if you need to remember lists, if you want to remember all 50 states in the order, you know, with the state and the capitals in alphabetical order, um, if you need to remember all 27 amendments to the Constitution in order, this is this can come in handy. But it's I'm just that's why I said I'm not teaching it now. Yeah. This I'm is just, I'm just throwing I'm just it out there. I'm curious though if it helps people with ADHD and things like that if this clicks to them this more is, than it this, does to me. I mean. No, it's an advanced memory strategy. Okay. That's all. So okay. this that's like a bonus. Right. Okay. Okay. Ignore it. Feel free to just let it go. Okay. What I'm what I'm pointing out is that there are strategies using the visual and spatial that can take you as far as you want to go. You want to go to medical school, law school. I wouldn't I wouldn't go to medical school without this. I wouldn't go to law school without a way to actually categorize information in in very detailed format, very abstractly. Right. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's that's enough of that. That's enough of that. Um, basic memorization summary. Whenever you sit down to learn, first ask yourself, what, what can I learn from this or how can this information help me? Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why am I studying? Why is this important to me? And get it up on the table. You know, if, if you got somebody running around, well, you know, if, if, if it's this, well, I'm just doing this because my mom makes me, or I'm, you know, if you're in that constant debate, you know, of trying to get them, pulling teeth to get them to sit down to study, get out of that. Why are, why are you studying? Why are you going to school? Why do you want to sit down? Why do you want to sit down and do your homework? Why is it important to you to get this information? Is it, is it, you know, or, or do you not care? Do you not care? Do you want to just go and stay in the second grade forever or the seventh grade or whatever? You want to, you want to stay in seventh grade while your friends move on? You tell me, what is it you really want? Okay, it, it helps take them, get them taking responsibility for, for their education and for their behavior. Um, basically, you know, as long as we're practicing being relaxed and focused, it's gonna help us read or listen that information carefully. We wanna break it down into pieces, okay? If someone is having a trouble remembering an information, it doesn't matter what the kind of information is or how much it is, if you break it down into small enough pieces, you can pretty much remember anything. Um, you know, one of the questions I ask is, how do you eat an elephant? Slowly. And they answer, one bite at a time. <laughs> one bite at a time. Um, practice reading, listening, um, just every so often when you hear something important, just get in the habit of, get them in the habit of pausing and just taking a snapshot of that movie or a snapshot of whatever their, their, whatever information they're playing with and then write down a little trigger word. That's going to come more later on when they get into listening to lectures and things like that. Is there a way to teach them how, I mean, I feel like when the teacher's just up there talking, talking, talking. How do they know when to cue in to what's important? What's I, mean, I don't know. How do you get them to hear what's important? Or I don't know. Well, the first step is to practice being relaxed and focused. Okay. The next step is to get them practiced, get them in the habit of visually listening, because that helps keep you engaged. And if you're making you know, silly pictures out of whatever the teacher says, that's, that, that's going to be somewhat engaging. Um, and Is that distracting though? What happens, okay, the teacher just said something, so you're like, okay, let me, let me stop and think and put that in my head and make a picture. Teachers didn't stop talking, of course. They're still rambling on and on and on. Yeah. So now are you going to miss that chunk while you're stopping to make the picture of the thing you listened to a few seconds ago? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Which is why you 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 want to um, hopefully until a child gets up into like 
sophomore year, they're not going to be getting lectures, okay? Because that's an advanced skill, taking notes and understanding what to listen to when you're taking lecture when you're getting lectured. That's a, that's an advanced skill. Um, even getting textbooks without the keywords highlighted, that you know now you have to figure out what the important right. words are. So so those are advanced skills. Look, kids under 16 shouldn't be dealing with that. They shouldn't they you know they shouldn't be dealing with having to take lecture notes unless the teacher is going to put the notes up on the board for them. Right, that's what they usually do. They have yeah. the overhead or whatever, and yeah. So what they want to do is just write down the important key points. Boom, and boom, boom. Make pictures of those as they go. And then make pictures of them. Yeah. Um, you know, the, and, and when you do get into lectures, working with older kids, if you pick out the key, key important points and you make a picture of that and you write those down, even if you miss some of the detail -y stuff while you're writing down your key word and making your picture, it's not going to be the end of the world, okay? If you can't remember your picture really totally or fully or you miss a couple of details, you can ask your friend, you can go online, you can... You know, you can find the information and fill in right. those little details somehow. But if you miss a key point because you're busy scribbling, you know, all the little details, all the little detail stuff, now you don't even know what you missed. Right. You you, you can't you even to go you, you can't help you can't get help because because you don't know what you missed. Right. And they go back to that stress mode. Yes. Now, you know, you, and with good reason. Yes. Good reason because <laughs> you just missed half of the lecture. Right. Okay. Um, good questions. Good questions. Get them in the habit of making learning interesting and fun. How does it apply to you? I had one kid, I said, I said, okay, when you're sitting in class from now on, try to think, it doesn't matter, whatever the teacher says, try to think of how that applies to riding or designing motorcycles. How does that apply to riding or designing motorcycles? And we did a little anchoring. I said, okay, just think about it, we rehearse it. You know, okay, she's talking about, about whatever, uh, I don't know, the earth or something. How does that apply to, to, to riding or designing motorcycles? And, and, and here was a funny thing. Not only did he enjoy being in class more and get more out of it and make learning easier, but he actually, because of the way the brain works, he actually came up with ideas for designing a track that he never would have thought of. Because, you know, remember, we're good at putting different things together. And so he actually was able to improve his whole motorcycle riding uh, uh, area of his life by listening to the teacher talk about language arts. <laughs> um, you know, we went over lectures a little bit. The biggest thing is get the important points. That's, that's it. Um, I guess I have, do I have note taking, visual note taking? Um, well, I guess I have two ways that work for different people, different types of teachers, and different types of lectures. Younger children and or, more organized teachers are going to do well with the structured note taking. And then if you're listening to very disorganized teachers, the bubble notes, where they tend to go back and forth to different topics. Because then you can add on little pieces as they come back to something. Um, or if it's a discussion or a, a business meeting where you're in a swirl around something. What? Is this mind mapping? Yeah, very close. It's very similar. When I went back to the last training, this girl was from Europe. She had like this little um, screen with a keyboard, kind of like a, a large touch screen. Uh -huh. And then um, she would touch it and tap it and would make, make a bubble. Yeah. And she type words to put in that, and then she with she her just, finger she touch it and she connect all bubbles these bubbles together on this little screen. I never seen anything like huh. that before. Yep. Yeah, there's software out there that'll, that'll I got do that. Mind mapping program. Mm-hmm. 